Welcome to Top Gear's Speed Week 2020, our very own festival of fast. And we're not just making that festival bit up, we are actually camping, which is a bit of a stupid idea. But we're here at Anglesey in Wales. We've unusually got some nice weather and we're shooting the cover for the magazine, which means we've got this sensational lineup of cars laid out in front of us. And I thought you might want to meet them and have a good look around and see who the contenders are this year. And we start here with the big boy, don't we? The McLaren. 765 LT. We're the first people outside McLaren to actually drive this car. We did think, how on earth are they going to make the 720S faster? Why would you want to make the 720S faster? Well, here's our answer. And it's got some big shoes to fill because the 675 LT was such a huge leap on from the 650S, wasn't it? Anyway, great expectations for this car. Moving on, the BMW M2 CS. 444 horsepower. 40 horsepower more than the M2 competition. It's got stiffer suspension, it's a little bit lighter. It looks fantastic, this car. I have no doubt it is the best BMW M2 they make, but is it 25 grand better than the competition? Hmm. Ah oh, yes, a Porsche 917. Depending on how far away from it, you might get this. It is from a company called Half-Scale Cars. I'm told there's a 300cc Yamaha engine behind there, and if you take the roof off, it's not just for children, it's for slightly vertically challenged adults like me too. So definitely be having a go in that in a minute. Past some of the camping paraphernalia, we'll go over here to the Mini GP. On looks alone, this has to be one of the looniest cars here, doesn't it? Look at the size of this wing at the back and these carbon fiber spats, we'll call them, and there's no seats in the back. This thing is a bit of an animal, 300 horsepower, but it does have an eight speed automatic gearbox. Is that gonna hamper its chances? Probably, but let's not you know, jump to conclusions yet. Oh yes, look at this. A Corsa blue Ferrari F8 Tributo. Bit of a funny car this one, because on the face of it, it is a brand new shiny Ferrari. It should be very exciting, but for some reason, this car is just a development of the 488, itself just a development of the 458. And yeah, reception to it has been a little bit flat, but I think we need to get real here, guys, because this is a 710 horsepower V8 twin turbo mid-engine Ferrari. I think when we get out on track, there's gonna be a royal rumble for the keys for this thing. Don't look behind me, we haven't got there yet. Over here, yes, the Golf GTI, the eight. Golf GTI, um, not that different to the seventh Golf GTI, if I'm honest. Um, probably the least interesting, interesting car in the world, isn't it? Um, not much has changed. 242 horsepower. That's the same as the old performance pack. It's got the same NQB chassis. It's basically got a slightly angrier face and a really annoying buttonless interior in there. But it does drive well. I'm told. I've got a prediction for this car. It's basically going to sit around in the pit lane getting ignored because of all the other faster, shinier stuff that we've got here. But then when it comes to the five hour drive home from Wales and who's going to keep it for the weekend, there's going to be a fight. Yes, the Porsche Taycan. The 2019 Top Gear car of the year. Not the Porsche of the year or the electric car of the year, the car of the year because this thing just takes all your preconceptions about electric cars being heavy and clumsy and throws them out the window. It's biblically fast in a straight line. It likes a corner too. Let's hope we got somewhere to plug it in. And then we come to this, as if you didn't spot it straight off. World exclusive, the Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400, a one-off technology demonstrator designed to show people who are doubters about electric cars what electric cars can do. So 1400 horsepower, as you probably guessed, seven electric motors, three at the front, four at the back, and it's the configurability of this car that makes it what it is. So you can have front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, four wheel drive. Um, it can be have a drift setup with extra lock and a, basically a completely new front end, or a track setup with loads of grip and wait until you hear this thing. It sounds like a banshee on acid. Come on, we gotta keep moving. Lamborghini. The Lamborghini Evo, the Huracan Evo rear wheel drive. A car that has a sense of humor, doesn't it? Not only is it painted in this entirely appropriate acid 
green colour, but as I mentioned, this is the rear-wheel drive one. So 5.2 litre V10 naturally aspirated, 600 horsepower and rear-wheel drive. So it likes a skid or two, this car, and we shall be sampling those as the week goes on. The Audi RS6, the ultimate 600 horsepower dog kennel. On the road, this car is a rocket ship. I've got a feeling on track it's going to be a bit big and a bit heavy, but do you know what? If it doesn't work out, it's always good to have something large to do the snack run or, you know, if we run out of toilet paper. Back over here, we're zigzagging. You can see it's a cover shoot, so we have to spread the cars right out at the back, hence the distances between them. Yes, you've got to have an Aston Martin, haven't you? The Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster. It's a Vantage without a roof and a four litre twin turbo AMG V8 engine. So it's gonna sound glorious and smell glorious when we do some donuts in it later. Now, what is this? I hear you say, a classic car at Top Gear Speed Week. Well, not exactly. First of all, it's not eligible to win this thing because you can't actually buy one, but it is probably the most fun you can have on four wheels. Basically a replica of a DB5, carbon fibre body on top of an M3 chassis, although Aston doesn't like to confirm what's underneath. This is the stunt car from the new Bond film, No Time To Die, and it's just hilarious because it looks like a million quid classic, but you can drive it like a stolen Citroen Saxon. Genius. Over here. The new Porsche 911 Turbo S. Just checking it is the S, isn't it? Yeah, all good. If you like your face rearranged in new and interesting ways, then this is the car to do it. It has 3.7 flat six twin turbo, 641 horsepower, 0 to 60, 2.7 seconds, and well over 200 miles an hour. It's the one true everyday supercar, isn't it? And it just got a little bit more super. Three more to go. The Morgan Plus Four, the new Morgan Plus Four. Tally ho, it's like one of those um, Smeg fridges, isn't it? That looks retro and old school on the outside, but inside it's actually new and up to date and quite high tech because under this Biggles bodywork is Morgan's new aluminium chassis, and up front is a BMW engine. Two litre turbo four cylinder, 255 horsepower. Also, no electronic aids in this, apart from ABS. So, when it inevitably rains, it's gonna be quite fun. Over here, the Alpine A110S. So you may remember two years ago, the Alpine A110 came to Top Gear Speed Week. It saw, it conquered, it went away with the overall title. Just a brilliant, brilliant little car. So it's now sprouted an S, a bit more power, stiffer suspension. It will be glorious to drive this car, but, Aren't we getting away from what the Alpine was all about in the first place? Is more power and stiffer suspension always a good thing? We'll find out. And finally, if you don't count the burger van and the old Defender in the background, we come to this, the Aerial Nomad R. Better to think of this thing as more of a tarmac rally car than an off-road buggy like the standard Nomad, it's harder, it's faster. It's got the engine from the Atom 3.5R, so a supercharged two litre, 355 horsepower. Again, very fast around the track. It's got a six speed sequential gearbox, so you only need the clutch to move off from a standstill. It's obviously very, very, very exciting, this car, but aren't we again getting away from what the Nomad was in the first place? Bit of an identity crisis here, but I'm prepared for it to prove me wrong. So that's it, those are the cars of Speed Week 2020. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to announce that Speed Week is officially open. <laughs>